PRC2 News is highlighting the issue of domestic violence through our new initiative called Breaking Free. We are providing resources to help and solutions to break free, but we're also having the conversation about how domestic violence impacts people in our community. Andy Sirota is joining us now to talk more about this, Andy. Yeah, Brandon Sion, you know, it is so important to meet victims of domestic abuse where they are. Even more so, advocates say, when culture plays such a prominent role in terms of forcing someone into silence because because of the cultural stigmas that are often attached with this type of violence. In the South Asian community, there is so much silence around being abused. While some of it has to do with a person's immigration status, women often don't come forward to report the abuse because they're worried about how sharing their story would impact their family and their community. They're not thinking about themselves in these situations. And Andy, tell us how family roles sometimes also play a big factor here along with the cultural norms. Yeah, you know, guys, there's a real deep stigma against divorce in the South Asian culture. It's not seen as a personal failure, but more as a family failure. When one person in a family gets divorced, it can very much impact the ability of their siblings or cousins to marry. For lack of a better term, it becomes a stain for both women and men. So much work is being done right now in Houston's South Asian community to destigmatize it. It's all about kind of keeping the family together um, and not quote unquote breaking up a family when in reality, when you're in an abusive marriage, that family is already broken. So the work we're doing here is, is, is healing a family and we're doing that through reimagining what that family can look like. So Andy, with that, how can a person's culture or background impact them? You know, guys, what's so interesting and so different about the South Asian culture is that you're often dealing with multiple abusers. It may not just be the spouse, but their in-laws as well. Advocates say this is what they're seeing in the vast majority of survivors that they work with. Often they'll go to other agencies that may not have the capacity to be able to to serve someone whose abuser is not their spouse but their mother-in-law. You know, and so that's why our services become so very necessary and some of those cultural deep-rooted things that you're talking about things from dowries to arranged marriages, you know, those are all still very prevalent in the home country as well as as here. At DIA, the staff is reflective of the community that they serve, which again is so crucial here. In some cases, it can be the difference between life and death. Survivors are talking to someone who speaks their language so that no messages are missed, which in many cases gives them that confidence that they need to come forward and get the help. They're pretty complex, Andy. We do thank you for that. And I'm Important sure that. Reporting. Right. And I'm sure that there are people who do have some questions on this. And so we do want you to uh, send your questions about this to talk about domestic or intimate partner violence. Text for free to 1-866-996-5772. This Thursday, we will have a panel of experts ready to answer your questions live on the KPRC2 Plus live stream at 6.30 p.m.